if Mazar Kinsella wants to go first. Hi, Thomas. Unlucky today. Um, how do you even rationalise the match that maybe you thought shouldn't have happened, but one way your players had to play? They played pretty well, but then dropped also important points in. Yeah, well, the circumstances are the circumstances. Gave my opinion uh, now many times. And in the end, you try to focus. Of course, there was a lot of noise going on in the last 24 hours. Is this the perfect environment to prepare a match? No, for sure not. So we did, uh, we, we focused late. We, get, we did a late meeting, we did a short meeting. And um, yeah, we, we tried to do our best. Um, we struggled in first half a little bit. And after, after a very strong start in the first five minutes, we struggled to adapt to the uh, to Wolves shape. And we were a bit late in, in all the challenges. So uh, reaction in second half was very, very good and was a very good performance in second half. Um, well, you know, 0-0 zero, zero at Wolves, we have another clean sheet. So a lot of positive things that it's hard to create chances. That was clear before that it's hard to score goals here is was clear before. So I think like to, to, to analyze this game isolated uh, and, and purely this performance in game, I'm, I'm absolutely okay. We could have won it if uh, uh, with a with a bit of luck and with a bit of like yeah here and there a bit of more quality or a shot more or like little situations on our side. But very happy how we played the second half. Okay, we'll go to Nick Pure. Hi Thomas. Um, what happens next? Do you think? Um, obviously, with the with the matches coming up, I suppose you is a situation just that you've got no idea whether you'll be playing next week. No, I've got no idea. I've got no idea. I, we had an idea yesterday evening what's going to happen. That did not happen, so we have no idea uh, what will happen. We will, we will do tests. We will continue to do tests on a daily basis. And we will go to training like we did. I think uh, we as a club, we were very, very responsible. We left Kai out against Everton. Also, we needed him badly, badly, badly on his position. We left him out with a negative test because he had symptoms. We left uh, Shorginho out today. Also, there were like, there, it's not even clear until now if he's positive or negative. So I think we were very, very responsible with it. And uh, and still, there was a lot going on in the last uh, in the last 24 four hours. And, and okay, now we will sit in the bus for, for three more hours together and and tomorrow we will do training and uh, before we will be tested and uh, wait for the result. Okay. We'll go to Jacob Steinberg. Hi, Thomas. So many games called off over the weekend. You know, six other games called off. Do you think that this has maybe damaged the integrity of the competition? The fact it that you've been allowed to play. It has it damaged the integrity of the competition that you've been forced to play, now falling six points behind City? I don't, yeah. you know, the, 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 the problem are not like the points we, we, we dropped today are not the points and same time City, I don't know, did they win against uh, Newcastle? Okay, this was predictable. The points that hurt are the, the points we lost at home against Menu, against Burnley and against Everton. These are the six points that hurt and, and not today. Uh, I can, I, I cannot, and I will not comment on any other decision that is made from from other games postponed or being not postponed. We never, never uh, compared ourselves to any other um, situation. We were just worried about the safety of players. The players were concerned about their health because we had several positive COVID tests in several for, in, in consecutive days, and that was it. Um, and from here we go. Tom Hi, Thomas. Did you say it was seven positives among the players or seven positives among players and staff, please? No, seven players. Seven players. And they were all... Plus staff. Yeah. Plus staff. Of course. So how, how much is it in total, please? Can you give us an idea? No, I don't know. I don't know. But there are some numbers in, in staff, of course, and they're not in, in, in the training ground at the moment, of course. Is your training ground still open at the moment? If we played, why should it be closed? We, we, we played a game, so why, why, how can we close it? We have the next game on Wednesday, uh, so we have now two days, we cannot close it. Uh, how, how should this happen, that we send everybody home and arrive for, for, for the next game without 
without training. And this is this uh, no. I mean, the, the, you know, the decisions is the decisions, and and then I understand everybody when they say, yeah, look, they have still 14 players. But if you look a bit more into detail, if you look a bit more into detail, and you check out who the 14 players is. You see Trevor Chaloba with two training sessions. You see Mateo Kovacic, one training session. You see N'Golo, uh, N'Golo Kante, one training session. We, are do, we, are, we, are, we were put in a huge risk of, of, of health and safety to the players, also physically, not only from COVID, but also from COVID. So this was the decision. And of course, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if, if I catch it, and hopefully I will not catch it, if I, if I will do like sports on the very next day when I have to isolate for 10 days. We put Kova into a Premier League match after after second day after after a COVID um, infection. Okay, so if you count this as as fourteen valuable players to 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 play a champion, uh, to play Premier League, toughest league in the world on on the level that it needs. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, final question, Adam Newson. Adams, can I just check uh, what the injuries to Trevor and, and Hacking's ear? She also looked to be in pain when he came off. Um, yeah. Are you concerned about maybe not even having those two now for, for Brentford? Uh, yeah, well, this would be funny. Uh, I mean, um, this, is, this is what I mean. I mean, we, we run into, we, we, we can survive a game, but we, we will pay the price. At some point, we will pay the price, is for sure. Maybe we already do it. Um, with, with all our midfielders and uh, Trevor. Uh, hopefully it's just painful. In the moment, it's very painful. And um, we still have hopes that it's not uh, serious, but we need to wait for further examination. Um, and for Hakim, I, I think, I don't think it's bad. I think he got like, a, he got hit and, and uh, like on his nerve, it feels like on the calf, I think it was like, was was like tight so he was limping and limping uh, we had to take him off of course okay we'll leave it there thank you everyone i prefer not to comment because it's not uh if you want to speak about big decisions we don't you don't speak just about um about the red cards i prefer really not to not to speak if i speak i am in in big trouble in big trouble and i don't want to be in big trouble well there were many incidents do you, do you think it's not a problem so I think it's simulation. It's not. It's an exaggerated problem. It's not really a problem in the English. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes, it is. Oh yes, it is. But I don't make campaigns. So you always think there's a campaign against you? Yes. No, it's not against me because I, I'm not on the pitch. Against Chelsea, yes. Against Chelsea, yes. You know. In the last couple of weeks, do you want me to tell you? the two most important things that happened in my matches. In, Philippe, in my matches, in my opinion, Philippe Luiz and Eden Hazard should be now or could be now with broken legs. These are, the, for me, the two crucial things of, of, of my matches in the last two or three weeks. Philippe Luiz.